Hey everybody, Tom here. This is the second time that I have been, that I've had the honor of being invited to train the St. Petersburg Olympiad team for the speaking section of the All Russia Olympiad. So we're talking about the best students in St. Petersburg. Their vocabulary is incredible and they can already speak really, really well, having gotten to this point. So the question is, how do I prepare them for this Olympiad? And I wanted to go through some of these strategies and how I adapted the materials and how I challenged these students and why I challenged the students in the way that I did. Uh, because I think that gives some perspective on, uh, the, some hopefully helpful perspective on how you can approach activities and adapt activities in any lessons. So the task on the Olympiad is that the, the students will get a fact file. They'll get a page or a couple pages of information about something. Then they'll have a video, a silent video, no sound, and they'll have to narrate that video using facts from the fact file that they got at the beginning. Now that is an incredibly difficult task. And it's not something that anyone will ever have to do in real life. That is not a real life skill. It's a difficult task that is made to challenge students who are at this high level. These are the top students in the country and you have to be able to differentiate, differentiate them. So if we're talking about just a general job interview sort of thing, then it's not really going to do much to differentiate them because they can all do that. They can all do that relatively easily. So that's the task that I had to prepare the students for, and the question is, how could I do that? How could I do that, and what's my strategy going in? So that's the situation. Now, I had two things that I came into these lessons with. Number one, I had messaging, and number two, I had strat a strategy in teaching, a general strategy. Now, my messaging, first of all, was made to get the students in the right sort of mindset um, for the exam. So I have some messaging about the audience. They need to think about who their audience is. Their audience are, is teachers or professors who are sitting in a room all day long listening to different students. And the question that I have for students is, how can you make those li people's lives easier? Follow instructions literally. Make it obvious when you do something that is in the instructions. Because it, speaking is often subjective. It, it's subjective depending on your listener how well they think you spoke. But the criteria for the activity are an attempt to try to make this speaking activity objective. So make it easier for the people, the poor, poor professors sitting in those chairs, listening to different people all day long, make their lives easier by following instructions exactly. They want this to be clear. And one thing that I noticed, because I was on the Olympiad uh, Committee jury this year for the speaking, and the students always did better when they trusted themselves. If they came in with something that was very wooden and stiff, that was because that was the part they memorized. But when it got to the point where they could improvise and have a little fun with it, they actually did better. They made fewer mistakes. They used more impressive vocabulary and more impressive structures. So, message number one, know your audience. Remember who they are. And the message number two, trust yourself. Trust yourself. There's going to be nothing new here. And you will be nervous. You will be nervous, and that's okay, but trust yourself. So that's the messaging that I went into this preparation with, where I'm going to tell these students over and over and over to trust themselves. And my strategy in general, in teaching, was to lead the students to activities that are more challenging than what they will see on the Olympiad. And my messaging there is, if you can do this, you can do that on the Olympiad. This is more difficult. What you just did is much more difficult than what you'll see on the Olympiad. You got it. Trust yourself. Follow the instructions. And that's it. You've got this. So I'm trying to build their confidence going in as well. 
So I've got my messaging, I've got my strategy and teaching, now how did I put together these sorts of lessons? The danger here is that the activities can become boring. If we just do speaking activity after speaking activity after speaking activity, it's an hour and a half long, the students are going to hate me by the end of it. They're going to hate me and they're going to be ready to run out that door. So what I want to do is mix in different types of activities to change the energy levels throughout the lesson so that we can keep some sort of momentum going forward and so that they get as much practice as possible. So there were three ways in which I could change up the energy levels. So we've got number one, messaging. I would do an activity and then I would underline my message saying, hey, look at that. Did you follow instructions? There we go. Nicely done. And then we, I emphasized the messaging that we just talked about. Uh, also, trust yourself. You can do that. You can do the Olympiad. No problem. Will you be nervous? Yes. I can go back to these messages and it changes just the, it, the monotony. It breaks the monotony of just speak, speak, speaking on their part. And then I had a lot of fluency activities that I used. So I used fluency activities like I used convince, I used shock, I used um, idiot. One of the fluency activities that they had a lot of fun with, and for or against, and brag. So I used essentially all the fluency activities at different points just to break up the, the monotony of only doing long speaking tasks. Now this only took like three or four minutes to do. The messaging would take a, you know, a minute. But what that does is it changes the atmosphere in the classroom. Because even if it's a great, exciting speaking activity, if you do great, exciting speaking activities, each of which is 15 minutes long, then you're going to lose the students. So I had two ways right there, messaging and fluency to break it up, and then pronunciation. I, had these, I, I used high-level pronunciation activities that would challenge the students. And, and that, I would also have that as a message. Warm up your mouth beforehand. Make sure those muscles are ready to go. Because you're going to get better as it goes along, if you start off cold where you're nervous, just kind of frozen before you go into the room, that'll make a difference. Warm up those muscles. So we do pronunciation, fluency, and messaging. And I do these in every lesson. In every lesson, regardless of level, in order to break up monotony and get momentum going. Then challenging the students. I have three, I have three basic ways of challenging these students in these speaking activities. Number one, more information. So I'd give them more information that they had to reference, a fact file they had to reference. Um, I would give them directions that they had to follow point by point. Maybe the directions got longer. Give them more information as we go through the class. So my earlier activities will have less information, but as we get towards 60 minutes in, 70 minutes in, the activities are getting more and more difficult in in terms of the amount of information that they have to hold in their head and remember before the speaking activity. And then more randomness. I had a lot of fun increasing randomness. And after this sort of messaging, after this, after increasing randomness in an activity, I say, well, if you can uh, do this, it's not going to be that random. It's not going to be as crazy on the actual Olympiad. So you can do that. And that just emphasizes my messaging, my, my messaging again. And then Increase speaking time, decrease preparation time. So I would require more speaking with less preparation, and that led to a big activity at the end that the students did very well on with almost no preparation time. Almost no preparation time. And that's what I really wanted to lead to. I had a video, it was Charlie Chaplin. I thought that's a normal thing to do without sound. So I had a video of Charlie Chaplin, and the students first had to read a little fact file, one page about Charlie Chaplin. I gave them three, four minutes to do that, to make notes, to underline. Then I played a video, a Charlie Chaplin video, that they had never seen before. And that's more difficult than the Olympiad because they're allowed to see the video. And they had to narrate over the video that they had never seen before, referencing that fact file, that information that I had given them previously. And not only that, but they had to switch partners to switch who was speaking at random times when I said switch. So we got to that point where we had very little preparation time and no preparation time when it comes to the video, 
more randomness because you can't repeat what your partner said previously and you have no idea what your partner's going to say. You're not going to know when it's your time to speak or how long I'm going to make you speak. And there's more information to remember. You're taking in information from the video and you have to remember information from that fact file. That's more difficult than even that difficult task that they're going to do on the exam. Why is it important to challenge them beyond that? Because I can't make them as nervous as they will be on the exam. They're pretty comfortable in the classroom. It's kind of a more lighthearted atmosphere. So I need to challenge them beyond that so that they're ready to act on the exam. That's what I wanted to lead them to. So throughout, I had activities that built in difficulty towards that overall very difficult activity. And I threw in these, this messaging, fluency, and pronunciation to break up monotony. Now some activities that I had. I'll just give you some examples. So uh, I had just, let me see here, a job interview. So I just had job interview cards um, that I, I took from another activity that we have. Um, I think it was old job. I had these old job cards uh, from a previous activity. And what I did was I got the students to just write down random words on blank sheet, blank little cards. One word per card. And then I, I took all those up. I mixed them up. Then each student had a job card. And they had to write down four interview questions for the job that they had. Then they interviewed their partners, but here's the, here's the catch. The partner had to take one of these random words from this stack of cards that they had written, and they had to include that word in their answer to the question. So those sorts of activities are especially difficult when you have students who have, like even a word like apple. How are you going to use apple in an interview in which you're going to be, let's say, a doctor. I don't remember what the situation was, what the, what the job interview was, but the student said something like, the apple of my eye. So that adaptation shows a, a great level of flexibility. And I can message to the students, it's getting more and more difficult. If you can do this, you can do the exam. And it's important to have interesting questions. So that was one activity that we did. Um, I call that job interview with a twist. Then. Uh, we had um, this activity that I love called art. Now, art is an activity where uh, you just have like random shapes, and then you have to uh, take the shape. So this is the shape that the student would have, and then they would t uh, make a, 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 a piece of art around it. So it could be more abstract, it could be less abstract. And then I gave the student an information sheet about an artist. So I just found some basic information online about an artist, random modern artists. So they had to read the information sheet. Then they had to present a work of art from the artist, from the artist, connect it to the artist's biography, and give an entire presentation on it. Give an entire presentation on the artist, on that work, on the significance of that work, considering her, um, his or her overall profile as an artist, why that work is famous, what it means, how it fits within uh, the, the history of art in general. That's difficult. That's difficult, and it's more difficult than a lot of things that they will see on the exam, because this is ridiculous. H how are you going to interpret that? So, what, what else did we, did we have here? We also said, uh, I, I use for or against. I made an activity for or against where they had to uh, have, they have a quotation. One person is for it, one person is against it. That's one way I use it. Another way that I use it was to make them give a presentation on their favorite quotation. And they had these rules right here. They had these instructions. They have to have a short biography of the person who said it. Uh, they have to talk about the why, why the quotation is significant in the context of the speaker's life and why the quotation is significant to you. So this is a presentation to the class, and it's a random quotation. They might not have any information about this person's history who said the quotation, and they have to make it up. That's more and more difficulty as we go through the, the lessons. So it's an increase in difficulty moving towards this Charlie Chaplin video, 
and I decrease the preparation time, increase the requirements, give them more information and more randomness to deal with, and all the while I am emphasizing this messaging. This messaging. Yeah, you're going to be nervous, but if you can do that, what we just did, you can, you can do this on the, on the actual competition. You can absolutely do this. So working with any students, like these are exceptional students, exceptional students, incredible level of active vocabulary, really impressive. Either way, the messaging in any lesson is important. And the strategy in teaching that underlines that message that builds confidence still requires increasing challenges and breaking up the monotony with these sorts of activities. And I was able to come at this sort of training just adapting materials that I already had with these principles in mind. So I just wanted to give you an idea of how I approached that training of, of these students for a very difficult uh, competition in English. And that's the general approach I take to any sort of training for exams, job interviews, that sort of thing. So I, 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 I'd, love, I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, that's how I went about it. And now you know. Good to see you.